Music Hour, where music is the universal language. I'm Joe Kendrick at the Moat Music Store in Asheville, North Carolina, joined once again by Billy Cardine. Okay. Yep, nice to be here, Joe. Good to see you again, man. Good to see you. Yep. And we've got a fine piece of musical hardware here, something that you helped design. It's the Moog lap steel guitar. Uh, yes. Yes, it's a beautiful instrument. I've really been having a, a great time playing. Um, I'm kind of amazed that it came together, to be perfectly honest. I just, uh, on, on a, a chance meeting, uh, playing a gig downtown uh, with Jay Sanders and Jeff Seid, uh, I heard there was going to be a few people from Moog on the gig, um, and I was looking forward to getting to meet some of the people down here, because it's, you know, it's like a Nashville icon, you know, in the music industry. Um, so went out and played the gig, had a great time, uh, and Cyril Lance, senior engineer, uh, was, was playing the guitar, and um, you know, and I knew that he had a lot to do with product development. And so just kind of whimsically, I just said, "Yeah, what do you think about uh, taking the guts from this Mo guitar and putting it in a lap steel? That could be a really cool thing." And uh, yeah, he kind of says, "Oh yeah, yeah." yeah. And I, I assumed that was going to be the end of it. Um, but about a week later, he calls me in with a non-disclosure form, and there sits this uh, lap steel that we've come to dub the monster. is the very first prototype uh, that he literally Frankensteined together uh, by cutting the top of a Moog guitar off, cutting the top of the lap steel off, and gluing the bottom of the guitar to the lap steel. And uh, as it turned out, the scale length was too short. And uh, so I asked him to make it longer. And so he cut the neck in half and put a four inch piece of two by four in there, and, which he ended up calling the Billy Extender. And, uh, and, and then the, the fretboard was uh, a, a piece of Xerox paper. He, he Xeroxed it, just put an instrument up on the Xerox machine a couple times and just glued it down there. So that was my first few months of uh, playing the Moog lap steels with this thing. And, and, just collecting impressions of, of the instrument, what to do with it, how to make it um, fit into the slide guitar world. Um, you know, ultimately we would come up with this form and everything. But initially it was just to check it out and, and see what it could mean musically. This instrument offers just certain certain things, you know, musically that that would help for any classical music, but really for for I found it useful for a lot of different music. I mean, uh, I, I, you want to hear a couple of, of examples? Um, I mean, th th there's some stuff that's just really obvious right out of the gate uh, with one, one of the main perks and like, you know, the easiest thing to latch onto right off the bat is the fact that this thing will sustain strings indefinitely. So, um, and th there's several different ways to have it do that. But, like, Absolutely, man. Yes. We're Plus. looking forward to hearing, looking forward, looking back, your compositions on the Moog lap steel. And for Lingua Musica, I'm Joe Kendrick. Until next time. <laughs>